Hollywood Star Time. Today we bring you the first radio performance of Strange Triangle, starring Lloyd Nolan and Sidney Hassel with John Shepard. <laughs> now, Strange Triangle, starring Lloyd Nolan and Sidney Hassel with John Shepard, and another brilliant musical score conceived and conducted by Alfred Newman. <laughs> Francine. That was her name. And even now, in the still hours of the night, her voice comes back to me hauntingly. Hello, Sam. How are you? Francine. Even now, I'm haunted by that strange, exotic voice, by her green, green eyes and the subtle fragrance of her perfume. Rosemary, she said it was. It's rosemary, Sam. That's for remembrance. Francine. Beautiful, possessive, demanding... Francine. I just received my discharge from the army, and Harry Matthews, my boss, my best friend, had given me back my old job as regional bank inspector. But before starting back to work, Harry had suggested that I go up to San Francisco for a little vacation with pay. It wasn't much fun being a stranger in town and lonely. And I was sitting at the bar of a hotel cocktail lounge one evening, just about deciding to return home to Los Angeles the next day when she came in and sat beside me. I saw a reflection in the mirror. Smart, assured, richly dressed, and beautiful. Well, how very nice. I, I, I beg your pardon? Why, he's playing green eyes. Oh, I wouldn't know. Why, is it a favorite number of yours? <laughs> Only because I have green eyes. See? Yeah. Yes, they are very green, aren't they? Oh, but I'm sorry. You don't like music. No, no, no. I didn't say I didn't like music. I suppose you do. Oh, yes, I do. I, uh, I started singing for a time in Vienna. Oh, really? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I was going to the opera tonight with my cousin, but... <laughs> Well, he stood me up, as you say. Well, excuse me, but your cousin can't be very bright. <laughs> well, anyhow, here I am in a strange city with two tickets for the opera, and uh, you look so very much brighter than my cousin. Oh, I do. Well, I'd, I'd uh, be very happy to take you, Miss... Miss... Uh... Uh, Francine. Hmm. Uh, just call me Francine. <laughs> Silent people in a taxi think about, I wonder. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I w did you enjoy the opera, Sam? Yes, very much. Oh, you didn't see much of it. You were looking at me all evening. What? I'm sorry, Francine. I didn't mean to. Oh, that. I like it, Sam. I like you. Listen, Francine. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know more about you. I, I want you to know more about me because... Well, because I like you, too, very much. Oh, you're sweet. Everything. Your manner, your smile, the things you say, and the way you say them. Especially your perfume. Thank you, Sam. It's rosemary. That's for remembering. Oh, I'll remember. Oh, better not, Sam. Why not? What, Francine, anything the matter? Well, we're two lonely people in a strange city. We met, we liked each other, we had a pleasant time. Uh, good night for now. No, but uh, I'll be seeing you again. Uh, this is it, driver. Stop here, please. Look, you you are going to let me see you again, aren't you, Francine? Good night, sir. But first, this. She bent very quickly and kissed me. And then the taxi door had slammed and Francine was disappearing into the lobby of the hotel. But it wasn't the end, not quite. I called her at the hotel the next day. And the next and the next. We saw each other every day and all day. Those were the happiest three days of my life. On the fourth morning, I telephoned the hotel again and she'd gone. 
Nobody knew where. Gone. I didn't want to believe it, but I had to believe it. But it was over. It was all over. There was only one cure for the aching sense of pain and loss within me. Work. I went back to Los Angeles and I got Harry Matthews to send me out on a job right away. I'm having you make the usual routine checkup on the Pacific National Bank in Santa Rosita, Sam. Oh, it happens my kid brother Earl manages that branch, so give him my regards and uh, good luck, fella. The Pacific National Bank in Santa Rosita was a typical small bank with desks for the manager and his secretary behind a mahogany rail. A hearty, cigar-chewing man was talking to Earl when I came in. And the attractive secretary had me wait for a moment or two. Well, I know you hidebound conservative bankers, so I won't insist that you come in with me on this and make a killing, Earl, but uh, I happen to know that Tillicum Oil is going to buy out Medford Oil, and they're paying ten to one a share to all Medford stockholders. Now, that's straight out of the horse's mouth, Earl. At ten dollars for one, figure the profit, Earl. Figure the profit. <laughs> Thanks, Barney, but I'll still get mine the hard way. Suit yourself, chump. Uh, my regards to the little woman. Thanks, Barney. And so long, Betty. Be good. Goodbye, Mr. Schaefer. Won't you step in now, Mr. Crane? Thank you, miss. Matthew, this is Mr. Sam Crane. Oh, yes, you're the inspector. Glad to know you, Mr. Crane. Glad to know you, sir. Oh, your brother sends his regards. Harry? Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. Harry's a wonderful guy. Well, I ought to know. We've been friends ever since college. Well, this will be nice, won't it? How long are you planning to be with us? Oh, as long as it takes. Maybe a week. Got a hotel room yet? No, I came straight to the bank. Well, let me arrange a place for you to stay, Mr. Crane. Oh, well, uh, thanks. And the name's Sam. Well, Sam, my secretary will show you around. Betty? Yes, Mr. Matthews. This way, Mr. Crane. All day, the clack and clatter of adding machines rattling in my ears. Forget. All day, the marching columns of figures, red and black, credit and debit, asset and liability, security as collateral. Forget. All day, money, finance, dollars, the coin of the realm, dollars, dollars, the long green, green, green. Green eyes. Cool, green laughing eyes. And rosemary for remembrance. Forget. How could I forget? Well, Sam, time to close up. How about calling it a day? Well, that suits me, Earl. I'm dog tired. Well, now, look, Sam, there isn't a hotel room to be had in town. There isn't a hotel Now, wait a minute. So until tomorrow night, you're coming home with me. Oh, no. No, Earl, I couldn't. No argument, Sam. It's just for one night anyhow. So get your hat, let's lock up, and let's go home. Beautiful home you have here, Earl. How'd you do it? Ask my wife. She does it. Darling, where are you? Hey. All right, all right, Earl. Not so sharp, so I was thinking. Hello. Francine, this is Sam Crane. Sam, my wife. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Crane? How do you... How do you do, Mrs. Matthews? Uh, Earl telephoned you'd be coming home with him. Oh, but... uh... Why, you're not at all the way I pictured a bank inspector. No conservative gray suit, no glasses, and no stern white lips. <laughs> not Sam here. He's just an ordinary guy trying to make an honest dollar, for which he deserves a drink before dinner. Hey, Sam? What? Oh, uh, dry sherry for mine, if you have it. And make mine the same, darling. I'll make it three. Like the Romans, who is your guest, sir? Hello, Sam. Why didn't you tell me in San Francisco that you were married? <laughs> you didn't ask. You knew how I felt about you. Why did you do it? Yes, Sam. It was wrong, I know. Don't you realize what you've done to me, what you've done to Earl? Why did you do it, I said? Because I, I couldn't help it. Oh, Sam. I smiled when we parted. But do you think I smiled when I got to my room or in the plane flying home? Do you think things will ever be the same to me again, Sam? Earl loves you, doesn't he? Yes. That's the reason I had to give you up. And without a word of explanation. Earl loves me so much, Sam. What shall we do? Do it. Do nothing. Oh, no, Sam. Oh, no. I gave you up one. I won't ever let you go again. Here you are, folks. Dry sherry for three. Remember, Sam. I won't ever let you go again. Well, how are you doing, folks? Getting acquainted? <laughs> Somehow, I stumbled and stammered my way through that evening. 
being keenly, excitingly aware of only one thing, Francine, living, breathing, being in the same room. I grasped hungrily even for that threadbare bit of intimacy. I began to be afraid that Earl would notice my inattention, so I retired before they did. I was awakened by voices coming across the patio from the other bedroom. I'm sorry if I don't measure up to your ideal of a successful American businessman, Francis. Oh, uh, I didn't mean that, sorry. But that oil merge is in so safe. I hear you, Francis. Go to sleep. Cleans up my entire inspection. Is everything all right, Mr. Cream? Why, yes. Did you think it wouldn't be? Oh, no, I didn't think it. Where do you go from here? Oh, the Pacific National Bank of Calistoga. Mm-hmm. You finished here in record time. Yes, I did. I had to. Well, good luck in Calistoga. <laughs> Santa Rosita without a word to Francine, but without reckoning with Francine. On my second night at the hotel in Calistoga. Come in. It's unlocked. Hello, Sam. Francine. So, the little boy ran away, huh? Why, why did you come here? I brought you a small gift. A leather cigarette case with my picture inside. Here, look. But you, you shouldn't do such things. Now, no. what do you say, little boy? Francine, what the devil do you take me for? And what do you take me for? Why didn't you answer my telephone calls? Why did you leave Santa Rosita without seeing me? Francine, it's, it's no good. We're through. We're finished. Ha. Then tell me you don't love me. You see? No use, Sam. I ran away once. And you ran away once. We can't balance it now. And it's going to stay that way. Um, may I have a cigarette? Of course. I remember to put your favorite brand in the case. Mm. I can remember much more than that. Rosemary, for example. You are sweet, Beth. Got a match? Mm. Here. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, uh, I think we understand each other now. Do we? I think so. Good night, sir. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry if I woke you up, Sam. What? Who's it? Who's this? Betty Wilson. Betty. Oh, Betty. Well, what are you? What are you doing here in Calistoga? It's almost midnight. I'm downstairs in the lobby. I've got to talk to you right away. Right well, I, away. I'll, uh... Look, Betty, um, I'll meet you in the cocktail lounge in five minutes, huh? Now what? It's intermission time between the acts of our Hollywood Star Time play. So before we return to our stars and pick up the story, let's take time out for a musical change of pace. The orchestra has prepared an intermission snack for our musical appetites and serves it up forthwith.
Now, act two of Strange Triangle. I dressed in five minutes and hurried down to the cocktail lounge of my hotel, wondering what had brought Betty Wilson to Calistoga at midnight. I found her looking tense and white and urgent. I sat down on the little table with her, and she began talking with that abruptness of desperately worried people. Hey, what's happened? Three thousand dollars in cash is missing from the bank. Three thousand dollars. Well, everything checked when I left. It's happened since you left. Have you told Earl? No. Betty, after all, he's the manager. Earl knows the news on. Earl took it. What? Oh, Sam, it wasn't his fault, really. It's Francine. Her extravagance. He put the cash in the med for Tilly, the manager. I did that Bonnie Schaefer advised him to do, and, and, and the whole deal fell through. Oh, uh, what do you think I can do with him? I don't know, Sam, but you've got to help Earl. He's not vicious or dishonest. I never could have loved him if he was. Oh, I see, I see, Betty. But I, I can't help him. You'd rather just inspect yourself. Yes, that's right. My duty as a special officer is to arrest her. Oh, no, Sam, no. No, let me think, Betty. Let me think. What's the matter, Sam? Worry? If, if Earl went to prison, I sat there arguing it out with myself, reasoning, arguing. This was my chance. Earl was an embezzler. I could arrest him, send him away, and then I'd have Francine. She'd be mine. But she was Earl's wife. He loved her. Earl was Harry's kid brother. Harry is the best friend I ever had. It was my duty to arrest him. No. No, Betty, I couldn't do it. I won't do it. I'll quit my job first. Hey, sit down. People are looking. Well, it's... I won't have any part of this, Betty. I'm, I'm going to resign. And you won't save Earl? I can't save him. All I can do is... Run out. Oh, I'll write Harry Matthews my letter of resignation in the morning. This resignation to be effective at once. With all gratitude, sincerely, Sam. Does it? <coughs> yes, come in. Hello, Sam. Francine, can't you let me alone? Her secretary came to see you last night, didn't she? Did she? Yes, I made inquiries. She did. I know that she came to tell you about Earl. But believe me, Sam, I'm going to repay every cent of that money you took. Mm. Look here, look here. In my purse, check, cash, money for things I've sold, my fur coat, my jewelry, anything that would bring a dollar for Earl's sake. How much did you raise? Well, I... Uh... Still need twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars? That's a lot of money. Oh, but Sam, you've been so generous already. I have. Oh? Why? In, in failing to report Earl's crime. But I couldn't do that. Earl is my best friend's brother. But you should have reported it. You're the bank inspector. You're a special officer. It's your duty. That seems uh what are you talking about? Don't you know, Sam? I need twelve hundred dollars. Oh. Blackmail. Oh, you're, Sam. You're bad, aren't you? You're evil. Oh, Sam. You're rotten all through, aren't you? Oh, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, don't worry. Give you the check you want from me. $1,200. All right. Well, the dollars. Oh, Sam. Oh, you can be so cruel. And yet so good, so kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet, but you're good, but beautiful in the bunk. There. There's a twelve hundred dollars, and there's the door. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sam. You're a little angry now, so um, goodbye for now. Goodbye for good. Oh no, Sam. Just for now. Mm. Blackmail. Well, hello, hello, operator. Get me the Los Angeles office, Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's it. Thanks. Just a hunch. That's all. I had a friend at the FBI, and what he had to report sent me racing down the highway to Santa Rosita as fast as those recap tires of mine would get me there. I burst into the Santa Rosita Pacific National Bank expecting the worst and getting what I expected. Sam, Crane, you did come back after all. Oh, Never mind that now, Betty. Where's Earl? Well, he and Francine left the bank ten minutes ago to go home and leave on their vacation. Now, look. 
Did Francine deposit a check for $1,200 that I gave her two days ago? Well, no, she... No, I didn't think so. You've probably seen the last of her and Earl Matthews. Earl wouldn't skip town over $3,000. Was he in the cash vault before he left? Oh, yes. With his briefcase by any chance? Yes, yes, I think so. Come on, we'd better check the cash then. You mean to see if any is missing? No, to see how much is missing. $90,000. See? I can't believe it. Why should Earl do such a thing? Why? Because Francine would argue, but Earl, he'll give you as long for $3,000 as for $90,000. Come on, we'd better get over there. I know someone is here. I heard someone inside. Ring that doorbell again. Oh. Oh, Sam, hello. Oh, hello, Betty. Oh, won't you come in? Where's Earl, Francine? Uh, he just left on vacation. Why? Must be a very swank place he's going to. He needed $90,000 in cash for expenses. I'm afraid I don't quite understand your American humor. Francine, will you stop hamming for once and tell us if Earl is in the next room, isn't he? Certainly not. I told you where he was. Oh. Report on you from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Oh, Sam, you're not aware. You see, you gave me a cigarette case complete with your fingerprints all over it and your photograph inside it. I won't listen to you. Now, you might have gotten away with it all, but that little suggestion of blackmail was a tip-off that you were crooked. You had the $3,000 for Earl. Why didn't you give it to him? No, you told him his position was hopeless, didn't you? Must you shout you lie, Sam? Maybe the FBI's a liar, too. Here, listen to this. In 1939, you were married to Theodore White of Chicago, a bank manager, now serving a term for embezzlement. Oh. Here's another. Paris, France, 1935. Stop, Stop. That's enough. No, no. This is good. This is a matter for the guillotine. Stop. Do you hear me? Stop. That's enough for me, too, Sam. Uh, you fool. Oh, Earl, I'm so glad. Here's the briefcase, Sam. It's all there. Please. I can thank you for that. Well, Sam. Sam, if the police want me to testify against my husband, they'll know where to find me. We'll attend to her later. Get this money back in the cash vault before anybody misses it. No hurry, Sam. I'm still $3,000 in the red. No, I don't know, Earl. Here. Isn't this Francine's purse in the chair? Yeah. And here, isn't this the $3,000, including my personal check? Oh, Certainly. Oh, let's hurry back to the bank. No, wait. First, let's check the money in the briefcase. I'm sure it's all there, Sam. Are you? Have a look in here. Oh, no. Nothing but a telephone book. Mm, that's what it is, Earl. Francine took out the money and stuffed the briefcase with his telephone book. Why, that double-crossing. I'll get her for this. Earl! Earl, no, no, come back here. Oh, Sam, I think he's got a gun. Just stay here. Earl, don't be a fool. Wrong way. Drop that, Francine. Stop that. Earl. Wait, Betty. Oh. The police medical examiner's finished. Well, doctor... Oh, yes. She's gone. Oh, isn't this awful? Oh. No, it's better this way, Betty. You see, oh. Earl didn't have a gun and Francine did. She fired first. I fired to save all of us. And it's better for her. It was this or the guillotine back in France. Francine knew what she wanted, as usual, and she made her choice. I'll uh, have to make out a complete police report, of course. I, uh... Curious odor in the room, isn't there? Perfume or something? Perfume, Doctor? Rosemary, Sam. That for a memory. No, Doctor. I don't think so. Just gunpowder. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd Nolan, Signe Hasso, John Shepard, Lorreen Tuttle, Joe Kearns, and Al Hill for your splendid performances. And the entire production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.